Jimmy Johnson is the protege of Jeff Gordon, who co-owns that car with Rick Hendrick. Daryl Pupil leading by 1.1 seconds, and Teacher is about seven seconds back in 10th place now. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Johnson, I said early in the show that he's poised to win a race, and this could be the day. Eight at night. His boss right is right Ten. back here, not too far behind, and got a pretty good hot rod himself. He's up to 10. We saw him just blast through the middle of Ricky Rudd and Dale Earnhardt Jr. while we were in break there. Uh, Gordon, although he drifted back in the field on the caution flag pit stop, which is uncharacteristic of that crew, he's on the march back to the front. He's gained seven positions since the restart at lap 23. I tell you a car that as I walked through the garage area this morning that a lot of car teams were pointing to, he started back in 39th position, and that's Bill Elliott. He has worked his way through virtue of pit stops and all up to 13th position. And again, he's kind of backing up what I think we saw in happy hour. I mean, he was fast, but he was fast for a long period of time. That's what we were looking at yesterday. But look right there on the grill, you uh -oh. see that plastic, and, uh, and you know, I'm sure the spotter has probably seen that, and he's going to be communicating, watch your water temperature gauge, that's right over the radiator. Yeah, well, it could be why he's so fast. <laughs> well, when you take, when you put tape or plastic on the front end, it reduces the drag and increases the front down force, absolutely, but over a long run, it'll make that water heat up. That's awful big for a hot dog wrapper, could that have been somebody's windshield you, I, I believe it just, it just flew off, just flew off, it's gone, and that's a good thing. I tell you, I was watching off a of turn four there just a couple laps ago, and Robbie Gordon came off a of turn four in between two cars here, and I was <laughs> this cat. He did some a lot of steering. Thing jumped sideways on him. It was it, it looked a lot worse <laughs> when I was looking at it. He had the side of it. I could read 31 on it. And you, Darrell, what happened there happens a lot. You you almost run out of racetrack, and Brett Bodine and 11 was right up there, and it's like he yanked the steering wheel and got it loose. Hey, look at my little buddy here. Rusty and uh, the 32 car both will pay, they'll pay the price for those two tires and it won't take long. Steve? And Darrell, we just heard Rusty Wallace tell crew chief Billy Wilburn that his car is tight because of those two tires now, fighting a tight condition. Yeah, what happens is you, your left sides, they give up and it, it makes the front, it, you're, you're just pushing because you don't have any left side grip. And that, that's what will happen, they'll just wear the tires down, the car won't turn. And even when your car's driving good, if you're going to elect to put just two right side tires on, you normally will have to make an adjustment to compensate for just those two right side tires. Take a little wedge out. Sterling Marlin on the move, took eighth place away from Dave Blaney, who, as Steve pointed out, one of those cars that took two tires on the last stop. Prior to today, Jimmy Johnson had led a total of 14 laps in his career. Today, he's already led 20. Jimmy Johnson out front in California. Today's Radio Shack trivia. The last Winston Cup Oval in California was Ontario Motor Speedway, which stopped racing about 22 years ago. It's now an industrial park. What three drivers raced there and are racing here? Let's see, that was 1980, so it had to have been Sterling, Kyle, 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 Kyle and uh, Ricky Rudd. Ricky Rudd. Pretty close, except for Sterling. The Iron Man. Terry Labonte. That's it. Okay. And Ricky Rudd will break Terry Labonte's Iron Man record for consecutive starts at Lowe's Motor Speedway when we get there at the end of May. That's a good little race going on back here for uh, third, fourth, and fifth. Six. Dale Jarrett's caught up to the back of these guys here. Again, I think that 32 and a 2 are going to really pay the price for getting two tires eventually. There's no question when we come down to another green flag stop about lap 70, they have to change four tires. But I think everybody will after going 50 laps on their tires where they change two or four. But you know, Larry, that's why I always like to take four under caution. I then have the option of taking two under green if I felt like I needed to. So give me four under caution, and then at the green, if I gotta make a green stop, maybe I'll take two then, keep my track position. Now there's Kurt Busch, who is about one second ahead of Tony Stewart. And let's show you how that happened. Kurt's fast, uh, he's been closing on Tony. Look, there's, you go low, I'll go high. See right there's his hand. You go low, I'll go high, and I will let you by. 
because they know if they run side by side, Mr. Jimmy Johnson will get smaller and smaller. Right. He's already doing that. <laughs> I mean, point two seconds. Checking out on these guys pretty fast. But he and Kirk Bush are running similar lap speeds. Let's see how many RPM that uh, Jimmy Johnson's burning. That engine sounds like it's singing a pretty good song to me as he goes by here. Ooh, she's over there at nine, a heavy nine, maybe 950. That's out there by yourself. Now, if he was behind somebody, we'd see 9,200 because you get a little help down through there draft-wise. Now, he won't turn that much up the back. You'll probably see about 8,800 up the back because the back stretch is 600 feet shorter than the front stretch. What do you know about all this, Matt? Well, I'll tell you what, D.W., he certainly doesn't need any more motivation to win what he would consider his home track. He came on the radio a few laps ago and said that his car is still loose, and Chad says it's tighter anywhere. He goes, no, it is loose everywhere. They are planning on pitting for four tires in about another 15 to 16 laps. Now, here's the battle third on back. Rusty Wallace, Tony Stewart, Dale Jarrett, Ricky Craven. Now, I used to call in and tell Hammond I'm loose, and he'd say, well, you might be, but you're leading the race. <laughs> so leave it alone, in other words. But you also have to know what those guys are thinking, Daryl. You know the nature of this place. The more rubber down, the more the track temperature comes up, the track gets tighter and tighter. You're so afraid to tighten it up that you'll jump that fence, and now you'll be from a little loose to push it. Here's what's going to happen. It happens all the time. You'll run high here for a while because you don't have your car like you want but as soon as you get this car like you want a tire pressure wedge track bar, you'll be right down on the bottom. The guy that wins this race will run around the bottom of the racetrack when the day is over. Right now, you can run anywhere. That's what I like about this joint. Find a place where your car will handle pretty good and drive there for a while until we can make it better for you. Six different leaders in the first 51 laps. There's two seconds. Jimmy Johnson to Kurt Busch and three seconds back to Rusty Wallace from Busch. That's 13th, Dale Jr. Mark Martin, 17th. Pulse Sitter Newman back at 20th. Only two cars in the garage area. Kenny Schrader, engine failure on the fourth lap, and Shauna Robinson spun and backed it into the wall. On lap 18, bringing out the race's only caution so far, Dick Bergman. Kurt Busch came away from the pit area in 10th spot after the caution flag. He has worked his way all the way up to second. About 10 laps into the run, he said, for some reason, I have no forward fight. That problem has certainly gone away. His only complaint right now is he is a little bit free off. Jimmy Fennick, his crew chief, has told him a couple of times that he is faster than the leader. And what he means by no forward bite, when he goes to put the throttle down, the rear wheels are, are actually wanting to slide or spin. They're not hooking up to the racetrack. Dale Jarrett underneath Tony Stewart for fourth place. I don't think you got to be careful with that no forward bite and a little loose off. That's fast. Uh, a driver can manage that. But, buddy, I tell you, you got to be on your toes because that thing can jump out from under you in a heartbeat when you try to match the problem. But you don't want to be loose getting in the corner. No, 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 things. not here. At 200 miles an hour plus, you've got to be able to drive in here or you can't go anywhere. Darrell, this is the classic story of here in Michigan. Car drops to the bottom, dives it into the corner, takes the position. The car on the outside has the momentum, a little more RPM coming off, and takes it back. Yeah, and the other thing is, you, the, the guy on the outside keeps the guy on the inside pitched down all the time. He needs to be able to let that car, the guy on the inside, just come all the way out to the wall to make the pass. And it just can't happen if that guy doesn't let it, if the guy you're passing doesn't let it happen. They could run side by side like this for 20 laps. Be a good thing for the fans. Cheryl Crow is signing some autographs along Pit Road. 54 laps complete. Jimmy Johnson, the leader. Jimmy Johnson is two seconds up on Kurt Busch. He's eight seconds ahead of Rusty Wallace, Dale Jarrett, and Sterling Marlin, the front five. And don't forget, right after today's race on Fox, we'll have extended post-race coverage for you on Speed Channel. Right after we go off the air, Speed Channel will have more interviews and race analysis. If you're not getting Speed Channel, simply call 1-888-22-SPEED. Extended post-race coverage on the Speed Channel. To get speed, call 1-888-22-SPEED. Well, I'll tell you, that, guy, that car right there, 48 car, and the 97, they have run off the left everybody else. They're in the league all their own right now. They're running in the high 41s, low 42s. Everybody else is up in the mid 42s. 
Dale Jarrett currently running in fourth place right between Rusty Wallace and point leader Sterling Marlin. Listening to some in-car audio between Jarrett and his hey, crew. Todd, it's time to check with NASCAR again and make sure that I'm right that we like, uh, could go out of the pits and we can straddle that uh, white line down there on the bottom. DJ, it says here on his uh, sheet, keep the right side tires below the white line until you get through turn two. Okay. He told me, and, you know, when I went up here and asked him that we could straddle that white line. And what he's talking about under green is when you leave the pits down in turn one and two, he's talking about either keeping both sides tire, right and left side tire, below that white line right there where you see he's running above right now, or whether you can go all the way below it or you have to straddle it. I'm getting a confirmation from NASCAR that you only have to have the left side below it. And then once you get to the back stretch, you can blend in on the back stretch. So you can straddle it. That's what right. he's asking. Yes. And that's basically the answer to the question, I think. What NASCAR is trying to avoid is cars coming off the pit lane and shooting right up in front of traffic. It's a safety issue. Sure. Under green. Under green only. Yeah, because you go down that corner 200 mile an hour and you want to run the bottom of the racetrack. You sure don't want somebody coming out of the pits at <laughs> 70 miles an hour in the way. Rick Mask making an unscheduled pit stop and Judy Donlevy recovering from an uh, auto accident here earlier in the week. The 16 when car was in and out too, Mike. Uh, good to hear that Junie's at the track and that he's okay after uh, getting T-bone. He and Jason Edleski at 60 to 70 miles an hour. Car shooting out of a side street, but Junie banged up, but here at the track and okay. Robbie Gordon in the 31 car on pit road. We'll start to see a lot of the guys, especially about on the verge of going a lap down. We're getting close to scheduled pit stop time. They'll be coming to pit road trying to get that advantage of four fresh tires. Now, this is Gordon's home track as well. He's from Orange, California, where he still has a house, where his dad, still in, in the, the garage out back, maintains their off-road racers. Trouble in turn two. 21 car, looks like he went around over there. We stay green. Got a left rear, he's got a left rear tire down right there. Jeff Hammond. Gentlemen, what I've been watching right now is the 21 car started seventh today. And for some reason, listen to some of the conversation. His car has been extremely loose. Also, we can see he's got a flat left rear tire. He must have gone around trying to stay in front of the leaders, even though he's getting close to time to pit. I'm sure that was one of the concerns. He was just about ready to be lapped. Well, Jeff, I mean, the sun's out today. It's much hotter. There's a lot less grip out there. The cars are automatically going to be loose. Here's what happened to Elliott Sadler. I think his left rear was down, and he just chased it up the racetrack. Did a great job keeping it out of the fence, actually. We stay under green. Only one caution so far. That for Shauna Robinson's crash at lap 18. Elliott, made to, Elliott Sadler made it to pit road, so uh, we stay green. No problem. And, Larry, again, you, you know, if, if the track is overcast like it was yesterday and it's cool, you're going to have front grip. But when the track... When the track gets loose, uh, hot like this, the sunshine, you're going to lose the back end. That's going to be the first thing that goes. Darrell, this track is also home to another California kid, Kevin Harvick. And Kevin's not having a great day. He's only three seconds out in front of the race leader, Jimmy Johnson, right now. He's running right there with Johnny Benson, and they're in jeopardy going to lap down here pretty quick. And he restarted after that caution by virtue of changing two tires back and forth. But we, you and I talked to Kevin Hamlin this morning, his crew chief. He said, Larry, we, then this is the car he won Chicago with. And this racetrack is similar to Chicago. He said, we just cannot find the handle for this race car. Well, this is one of those places where it could be anything. It could be the setup, it can be aerodynamics, it could be lack of horsepower, it could be all kinds of things at this particular racetrack to keep you from running well. 